Um, so, you know, uh, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Devinder. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Avoma. Uh, and I'm going to talk uh, today on, you know, behavior-driven development, uh, which is sort of an extension of, uh, so we sort of saw the testing, uh, you know, framework uh, or how to execute a unit test, integration test using PyTest. Uh, and sort of the behavior-driven development, sort of an extension of uh, you know of, of the testing. It's, it's another testing methodology, I would say, uh, and it helps uh, sort of like similar to like test-driven development that some people follow. This is like a behavior-driven de uh, development. So let's see what it is, and then we can uh, execute some code as well, right? So, so what is uh, behavior, you know, uh, driven development? So this is the definition that I found out um, on the internet. Uh, so it's a software development process to, um, you know, drive collaboration between business development and QA teams. Um, so the idea being that, you know, uh, so typically, you know, you have some product owner, maybe it's a product manager, um, uh, a product manager, or the client. You can say sometimes, right? Depending upon what context you are talking about. Uh, and they have some some uh, you know idea in their head. Uh, they talk to the customer. Uh, they talk to the the users to figure out what actually needs to get built, right? And then typically they create some documentation around it. Hey, this is the requirement that we have. Uh, and then there's back and forth between like you know the uh, the developers, the product owners, uh, you know, and the testing team. Uh, and it, this happens over I don't know. Depends upon like you might have some use cases. Uh, if you're following some, uh, you know, agile methodology, you might break it down to stories, and this is what ex what is expected of the stories. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the developer and the you know the 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 testing team sort of work independently. They write their own test cases, uh, you know, and then you know they present it to the product owner, right? But what happens is that uh, unless you have sort of a common spec between all of all of these three folks. Uh, you know, things get lost in translation, or there's a lot of back and forth. And so, what behavior-driven development does is it sort of ties, uh, you know, all of these three things together. It ties the, uh, you know, the product owner, the tester, and the developer in sort of one common framework. Uh, and you know, that's how you know you can have this one document, and you collaborate on that one document, and you use the same document for like you know the testing purposes as well as when you're doing some development. Uh, and then the product owner also uses the same document, you know, to document new features or understand what's going on, right? So I'll give an example of what this is about. Uh, and so, like, you know, the the way this so this is the kind of a document that you sort of co collaborate on, right? Um, so it's called a feature file. So it's sort of you know you build uh, you you sort of develop multiple feature files. Let's say for uh, each feature that you implement uh, in the in the in the product. Uh, and this sort of serves as the uh, single. Uh, uh, this is the single uh, piece of document which is used to discuss the requirements as well as the testing scenarios uh, in one shot, right? So there's no separate document which you use for like you know, you know, uh, documenting the requirements. You use sort of this, the same file uh, for you know uh, specifying the requirements as well as testing, right? And behind the scenes, what, what happens is that uh, if you sort of implement this correctly, you can tie in uh, a testing framework behind uh, and attach it to this document, and you can execute the scenarios. Um, you can sort of make this as an executable uh, requirements kind, uh, you know, kind of uh, a document which which sort of embeds executable requirements, right? So. Think of it as like you know, the different scenarios that are there, and then you execute each of the scenario uh, as a test case. Right, so each scenario is a test case. Now, I've taken this example uh, from the Polls app, the which is there in the Django tutorials, um, and sort of you know I'll show you the code behind this as well. Uh, but the basic idea is that you just have one document that you use uh, while discussing the requirements, and then uh, the 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 developers and the testing team actually write test cases to make uh, to execute this as like you know uh, as separate test cases right so that's the idea behind uh, bd
any uh, yeah i mean feel free to ask me any questions if you have uh, or i can go ahead and then you know we can come back and you know talk about this um so instead of writing you know your test cases as like the executable code that we see in pytest uh, in pytest uh, the idea behind a bdd is that you write your test cases using natural language uh, and then uh, you know you sort of uh, convert you add like sort of functionality to that natural language to make it more executable right so so that's the basic idea behind you know bdd um so this is uh, you know the, the you have to sort of write you know the uh, the specification in in a certain language uh, and that that sort of uh, uh, markdown language almost i would say is called gherkin so it's a gherkin syntax um and you know it's the, the file basically has uh, you know a certain number of keywords that you need to use um i mean it's like features scenario examples steps and steps of like given when then uh, and then there's some advanced functionality on background and data tables so in this case again like you know there's a specific feature uh, which we are like you know talking about which is settings for 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 the polls that, that we conduct um there's some background in this case there is no background and then there are like scenarios right so the scenario is that you know questions published in future are not should not uh, you know, are not visible to the end user right and then there's this this keyword right so given uh, a question uh, with some certain text uh, and it has a published date which is you know 5 days from today so when the user vis visits the detail page then the user gets a page not found error right so this is sort of a, a english you know language description uh, which the product owner can sort of understand right so uh, product owners or product managers while they do understand you know the nitty gritties of the code in many cases but uh, not necessarily that they will understand um, like they'll be able to parse essentially a pyr test uh, you know unit or test cases basically right uh, so you know this is the typical format and this add detail is basically a tag that we have attached uh, you know to you know to a specific scenario and i'll, I'll get back to the uh, i'll get back to tags as well right uh so yeah that's the basic syntax uh, behind uh, basically uh, you know this gherkin feature file and you can you know develop obviously multiple feature files you can implement for each and every you know uh, for any feature that you have uh so i'm going to talk about why why is it you know why follow this methodology why not just write you know uh, your test cases using pytest and um go you know just just use use that right so the the main thing is that you know it's it's you know uh, explaining different use cases and scenarios is difficult right so you need to have this common language between um you know the the product owner and then the developer and the testing uh, the testing team right and unless you have this common language between these three groups uh, typically you will miss out on certain details or if you need even need clarification on certain details then you know it's 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 difficult right um the second main thing that i've seen is that refactoring test cases is difficult so once you have a complicated test case and you know you need to make a change to that particular test case it is very difficult to you know understand what is uh, you know happening in a particular test case and then modify it appropriately right um again like for simple products or simple uh, you know um, simple unit test cases it's it's easy but if you if you, let's say you have a complicated integration test case involving third party systems there's a lot of setup that's that's involved before you can sort of you know test out a certain piece of code and if something changes in between you you sort of need to go in and understand like the exact all setup steps and and code it's, it's sometimes difficult versus like you know understanding the natural language um the third thing is that like responding to support issues is difficult this typically i've seen happens where you implement a feature and then 6 months down the line there's a support issue that comes in hey does this work in this particular way or not and you know uh, it's you, you while, while you have written some support articles you know and all of those details in there still sometimes you need to go back and refer to the actual code to understand what is happening in in a particular case Uh, and it sort of uh, is easier if you have this sort of documentation in there because it sort of provides um you know even like for the support staff it's it's easy for them to actually go through it and understand it and even uh, you know respond to support issues on their own right um no common language between requirements and tests 
exactly you know I've, i think i've covered this already um requirements are not updated after features have been built uh, again you know uh this is basically uh again you know like uh, what i've seen is that you know you have the product owners has wants to implement a lot of features uh but then you know they come in and say you know the the team comes in and scopes okay for v1 this is the only thing that we are going to deliver right and so then you know you unless you sort of cut that out and create a separate and maintain that hey this is the v1 feature that we have implemented and we want to implement v1.1 later on it, it's sort of you know difficult to know what what exactly has been built and what has not been built right and then you know uh, it also happens that when you're building the feature you sort of change the requirements as well right and so then the document does not get updated so the initial requirement document does not get updated right so if you have sort of executable requirements uh then it's always be correct and you know exactly what has been built all right a last thing i think uh, uh, you know need to document features in order to write support articles again once if you have this sort of uh, you know the requirements document then you know you can use it easily pass it on to a technical writer or even you can sort of write uh, test cases uh, sorry support articles based upon you know uh, this feature file um so i have a question it says uh is scope of work is totally different than py test um i think um it's good for acceptance testing uh, again like you know it's not necessarily i would say um is the scope is different uh, you can actually write um you know you, you can sort of test anything in there uh with uh, bdd as well i think where it finds most useful is Uh, any place where there is sort of a user driven behavior or there's even a system driven behavior uh that you want to test out where user does something and then something else happens and then you want to test out something some output to the user for example that's where i feel it's much more uh, useful uh versus like let's say you want to test case a particular algorithm uh, then you know it it by test might be much more easier so and you know as i mentioned like you know like once you sort of start writing complicated task you know task cases even like understanding what's going on becomes difficult um so it is you know it's 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 much more easier to sort of use the natural language um to look at what's what's exactly happening i'll give an example of this as well um um so yeah i mean what basically um i'll give an example of a complicated test case that we've written at avoma and sort of drive home this point in a second okay i think i have it on on slide 7 um so basically uh, gherkin is what what it ties together is automated testing executable specifications and living documentation right so the document is executable um it's is basically you know whatever right in there needs to tie to an executable line of code right uh, each of the steps that we mentioned uh it's it's uh, it's actually documents how the system actually behaves so if you write something in there and you know if 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 the system actually does not behave accordingly it will throw an error similar to like when you write uh, execute test case and again it's executable specification so it's like you know you're running that doc you're running that file as a test case basically right um some resources i'll share the slides uh, as well so you can sort of uh, uh, look those up so here is uh, you know a killer sample feature file that we have uh, at avoma so this is a real sort of file that we have um and you can sort of think of it as like you know it's it's for acceptance testing um but actually you know this is a, a file that we that i created that i have already have an existing test case for this but i sort of moved over it to uh you know this uh, gherkin uh, syntax just because it was very hard to understand uh what exactly um happens uh, what what exactly happening in the system especially as you get more and more complicated scenarios right so in this case for example there is a specific setup okay right where like certain users exist in the system they have different roles they have different um you know different uh, permissions and all of those things and then you know you sort of do something like okay when a meeting is shared what exactly is happening who has access who does not have access so 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 you know it's 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 uh, it becomes fairly complicated once you have sort of have this complex scenarios that you want to test and with this it is actually easier to understand versus like the core for you know setting this up um 
you know it, it sort of works uh, in there right uh, it's easy it's easier to parse for everyone when you're talking about requirements as well as when you are executing test cases or if you want to update a specific test case or a specific scenario it's much easier to uh, change this rather than like going in the code and understanding what's there right uh, so I think Parag has a question: Is BDD scalable when it is used for enterprise pr products? I mean, like you know, um, scalable in what sense? I mean, it's definitely scalable. You can you don't have to use it for everything. Uh, you can use it for a part of uh, you know the functionality that you want to uh, get get it under tested. Maybe it's like the user uh, you know, behavior driven. Um, functionality right so it's not like you have to wholesale up uh, you know adopt this entire approach uh, you can just say hey you know what these are the few modules that i want to really test out using this functionality um, you can even say okay this new feature that that uh, you know that we want or a new module that you want to test and you can just use that you know you can just use up uh, in our methodology for testing that particular module right so uh, BDD with Django, and I'm going to jump in the code in a minute. Um, so, you know, the way that you uh, that you can implement this is, or the way that I, you know, I've uh, we have implemented it is, we use a library called as Behave, uh, which supports you know BDD execution uh, in Python, and then there's another library, Behave Django, which provides the Django integration basically um, for uh, you know for um, it just you know adds the Django app, uh, which provides some management commands. Um, the feature files that I showed you are actually uh, written under apps uh, features directly, and then the execution steps are added to like you know the feature steps, um, the behave RC lists paths, and you know, the environment dot pack controls the environment. So here is the uh, the library, and I'll just switch over to the console to show. Uh, how this actually works in practice. So I don't know how many folks are, um, you know, uh, how many folks know the polls uh, app. Um, uh, but you know, I can just go over the polls. This is the sample app that you see in the Django tutorial. Uh, page. Um, so if you follow like the Django's uh, official tutorial, uh, this is the app that they build. So like you know you have the uh, it's basically like you know you you conduct a survey, right? So that's the polls app uh, that's there, uh, and then it just consists of two database models. There's a questions that you pass to the users, and then um, you sort of uh, have multiple. Uh, choices for a given question, and then you know you can sort of vote. You know, so you can just have the vote. Uh, and what you can do is um, you can. Uh, so here is the test case that's officially again written um, using uh, you know the standard Django test case functionality. So I mean, this is the uh, test case, and again, it's like you know pretty simple. You you know, it's like um, test was published recently, and you know, so this is a, these are the test cases that have been written. They're very similar to what we saw with PyTest, right? Um, I'm just going to show how you know there's an existing test case uh, that's written in. Uh, so these are the two test cases that are written in uh, the standard format, and then how it gets uh, how the sort of are written in you know using Gherkin, right? So. So you can see, like you know, there's like this test future question, and then the idea being that uh, there's a published date uh, associated with each and every uh, question, pub date, and then if it is in future, then you know you cannot view essentially um, that uh, that question. But then once you know uh, once the server date rolls over to that particular date when it is to be published, then it's available to everyone. So. Um, you know, basically, this is the uh, functionality that's there, and uh, this is the test case that's that's done. It basically just sets it to like you know uh, uh, the question in the future, and then tries to get it, and then it results in a 404, and then a past question is available, right? And on the right hand side, you can see the uh, you know the 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 feature file that I've written for this, um, and you know it says basically questions published in future are not visible. 
and like you know given a question called as future question with a particular text and you know has a published date set to 5 days from today when the user visits the detail page for a future question then the user gets a page not found error um and similarly when you know we have uh, questions published in the past are visible to the user then the same thing right and what you can see is like you know you can sort of use this um the right hand side feature file as again like you know it's it's it's, it's a natural language so you can talk about it you can discuss about it whether it makes sense does not make sense you know all all of those uh, things are possible right and how you execute it is um yeah so so you know i've uh, you basically this is a management command which says manager.py behave and it goes in and, and executes it and then it gives you like hey you know uh, this feature has passed uh, there, there are two scenarios which have passed none have been skipped um and you know yeah how, how much time so it's like executing a test case that we saw uh, previously with pytest similarly it's just an execution of of this file right and how this all works together is that uh, you need to connect essentially you, for each of this give uh, you know lines of uh, each of the statements you need to connect a, a function behind it uh, which goes and executes it right so um if you go to steps and this poll steps you can see uh this is like you know a question create so like you know this is like the converting the natural language to lactal code and there's no ai which does this right now maybe uh with gpt3 or someone like that you can automatically in future create this but uh right now what we are doing is uh, basically just templatizing this uh this text right so question with this thing so this is a given statement it gets matched to this one and then it creates a question right so i i'm sort of uh can we achieve dri and bdd yeah this is exactly what what this is achieving right so you just have uh you know one one function for this and you have parameterized it so it is sort of we don't repeat ourselves right so this is the same uh same function will get executed for you know this statement um as well as this statement right so the same the same code will get executed um again like I've, i've sort of tried to make it a little bit this thing like has published date set to certain date from today and this is the same thing it, it just sets the published date right uh so this is what connects basically um the you know the feature file to the testing sort of uh, functionality that's there right so instead of writing uh, test cases you need to now um, and this is additional work I, I, nothing is free right i mean uh, the, the the cons of or you know the of bdd is that uh, you need to sort of understand all of this and build this feature file and then you need to sort of write all of this functions and you need to sort of uh, there is an additional uh, overhead of like you know each independent line needs to get uh, you know needs to be implemented independently right so you need to sort of think in in, in those terms um uh, i think for people who are from the testing background this uh, this is sort of similar thing i think that that gets executed in any case that that they work on but uh, as compared to writing just a plain test case this this is more work for sure um but it it comes with additional advantages that i just talked about right uh and yeah so so the basic these are the steps that you know that 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 get executed when you know when the scenarios are run and it sort of achieves do not you know uh, the dry prints you know so we can definitely reuse all of the steps in different modules um based upon like you know uh, you can sort of also copy you know use them across modules uh, if needed right so that's the idea behind uh, bdd uh Okay, so that's. Um, I'll just show a few more files that you know to work with the integration. You can follow the official documentation, uh, but I can show uh, basically how um, how you know what the structure that we have. So we have a new uh, folder called as features, and inside this feature there is like this uh, whole detail dot feature, which is the feature file that's there. And inside the steps directory, we have like you know the steps, and these are the steps 
uh, that you know which execute the uh, test cases environment.py basically can sort of say before every scenario set some variables and this is or before every um, test case you know, or after every test case if there's some pair down code we can sort of implement it uh, over here and uh, the other file that that we have is um, behave rc which just gives the paths uh, where the uh, feature files reside you can keep them anywhere uh, i like to keep them in each and every app, the feature files for a specific app. Sometimes there are like cross-functional things. You can sort of keep a separate folder. Uh, there's also some auto-discovery mechanism, which is there. Uh, but um, I sort of could not get it to work reliably. So I've sort of not, you know, I'm not using that auto-discovery mechanism. So yeah, um, so this is how you know uh, we execute uh, test cases. Uh, you can also write, uh, you know, uh, you know, add some tags, um, and this will sort of, uh, you know, execute only test cases with uh, a given tag. So, I mean, x equal to it will run the same same two two things, but. Uh, you can. This is especially useful if you like say you're working on a particular feature and you just want to like test, you know, quickly run some test cases against that particular feature, and that feature is resides in multiple places. Then you can sort of just use the tagging functionality. Uh, the second area where, where this is particularly useful is if you're working on a particular scenario which is failing and you just want to work on that particular scenario, uh, then you can just add a WIP tag. And then you can just say, you know, at WIP, and will only execute that particular, um, as in only that particular scenario, basically. Uh, where do we keep setup before the test functions? I think I've uh, again mentioned it. There's an environment.py uh, that controls it. So, and then it has a before scenario. So before each and every scenario, it can set things up. And this context variable is passed around to each and every step. Uh, and then I think there's also an after scenario, before a step, before scenario, before a feature. And so you can you can sort of uh, you know configure uh, the setup or teardown functions uh, in that particular area. Yeah, and there's one more command, which is the steps catalog. Uh, I can talk. Uh, it shows you all the steps that have been implemented. Uh, okay. um, so these are the steps that are there. It's especially useful if you want to like just look at all the steps and maybe try to grab uh, uh, you know a certain step which already been implemented uh, or not. So you know that's 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 where it's more useful. Uh, it will also, if you you know, uh, if you implement try to implement something you know which is not executed, then user gets ABC. Let's say, say, and if you try to execute uh, this one, it will show an error. Right, so you have not implemented this. Uh, you know, you need to add this function basically, right? Okay. So that's how you execute, uh, you know, the BGD test cases. Uh, some again, like some additional pitfalls or FAQs. Um, uh, logs need to be disabled. Uh, behave automatically prints logs for filling test cases. This was the artifact of I think how you know we had configured our logging system. Uh, typically, I think if you follow the standard pattern, uh, I think this is. Uh, this is still okay. So you know, if uh, uh, it, you know, it automatically prints the logs for filling test cases, which is great while you know while um, you know while we are debugging. Uh, steps need to be properly imported. So again, this is uh, an artifact of uh, the like you know the auto discovery not working. So the, what you have seen is that the first path, like the path pulls features. This is where all the steps need to be. Uh, properly implemented. So if you have multiple, for example, multiple feature directories, uh, you need to create something like you know, uh, all steps.py and just import all of those 
uh, steps uh, in, in that particular file. Uh, for debugging, uh, you can use a PDB, but you just need to set the uh, STD, uh, STD out uh, to correctly because uh, since it sort of uh, takes over the um, STD out uh, for like you know printing a bunch of things, and so you just need to make that one particular change. Uh, use tax suite as a single scenario or a bunch of scenarios or a failing scenario or a work in progress, uh, work in progress scenario. Um, yep, that's it. Uh, that's all that I had. Um, open for questions if you have any. Thank you, Devendra. Uh, so, yeah, it was a great walkthrough over BDD framework. So, I had a few of questions. Um, so, first one would be the Cucumber framework. So. Uh, could you just share any insight about cucumber framework have you used it or i think you know cucumber framework is very similar if, i think if i'm not mistaken um it's it's gherkin is sort of i think very closely related yes. to cucumber or is it a rename of cucumber uh, i think the main difference is that uh, they started with, with the ruby uh ruby world right i think even this exactly. whole uh, behavior framework is uh, behave framework is sort of a port from a Ruby uh, framework that's present, right? So uh, it's the exact same, uh, as far as I know, it's the exact same thing. Gherkin is just sort of, I think, renamed, uh, because Gherkin is also kind of a cucumber, actually, right? Uh, or sort of a vegetable in that, uh, this thing. So uh, I think it's they're very closely related. Uh, that you know yeah so if you actually google a lot of it is cucumber or gherkin sort of exactly the same things that are so there. if i google mm -hmm. about bdd the first thing it shows up is the cucumber framework so th that's what i happen to ask you this thing so okay yeah that was one thing um the other thing was uh, why bdd like uh, as you mentioned the use case like uh, it's great for user acceptance testing uh but uh sorry for the noise uh, so, um, if you have to write two steps, like you have to write uh, the feature file and the code, so how uh, is there any way to decrease this overhead, or uh, why would a QE or a, a organization would adopt this framework to be used in its production environment if there are two things to be maintained? Yeah, so you know, as I mentioned, right, you know, it's mainly about. Um, I can give you like again, like an example, right? So when you're talking, you need to create the documentation, or people create the documentation uh, when you're creating requirements, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and so, so there's a lot of back and forth that uh, goes between the product owner and the developers and the testing team, right? Hey, should it be this way? Or oh, what about this particular use case? You know, and so on. So there's a lot of back and forth uh, that happens typically, right? Uh, and unless you have this common sort of uh, document that's that's there, you can sort of create a separate, I don't know, story file or some, you know, all of those things. But uh, you know, if you have this executable sort of, uh, you know, a feature file, then 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 it it, it is it's definitely helps in clarifying things. Right between the they, they exactly know what what they're getting right so that's first the first thing, um, and then the second thing is that you know as you write uh, you know as you write more and more complicated test case so this is not the most complicated test case that's there in this even in this particular case right there are it's like I, I have like you know uh, you know test cases which span more than this right and uh, it it's fine when you sort of develop them but once you sort of refact you need to refactor them after like six months. And add something new to it, uh, it becomes very difficult to recognize what exactly is happening in the code. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the third thing is that you know, with code, even though you might have some standard patterns, different developers or different even uh, testing people will implement it differently. Implement the the code, the test code differently, right? And so, as developers, when you have to sort of work uh, with different you know ways in which things have been set up and you know all of those things, then it becomes harder to even understand what's happening in the test case. So with this, it sort of is bringing that sort of same personas 
same setup, same sort of terminology to a certain extent in in that uh, you know as like sort of the first hour for the you know for the for the testing framework. Right. So that's the basic advantage that I see in this. It's a pretty good justification, by the way. Uh, yeah, so uh, to show this test results to a novice or for management people or for reporting stuff, it's a great tool or a framework to be used. So yeah, that's a great thing. By the way, I pitched this question because uh, I have created my own framework. So this is like a publicity of my own framework. So I have written a robot framework. Uh, WT robot uh, is the framework name so in that you just have to write a yaml file which would be somewhat same like your feature file and that's it uh, you don't have to code the rest part so maybe people can look into it later on by the way Parag has also mentioned about the robot framework for the BDD support yes. in the chat section so yeah that's also a great framework to be used okay uh, yes I, I you know def- Definitely, the, uh, the robot framework has support for this. Uh, you can do a lot of things in this. I've not sort of covered. Uh, you can uh, also connect it with Selenium and actually do like you know front end based you know testing as well with this. Uh, so yeah, even all of those things are possible actually with uh, with robot as well as I think with uh, Behave as well. Um, I think there's one more question. Can we pass both in one string inputs to the function? Uh, we connect to the scenarios like overloading. Uh, I'm I'm not so sure about this uh, thing. Um, I don't think you can uh, do it, do it the way that I think it happens in Python typically. Um, but I'll have to check and see if if we can overload it. Probably not. I I would say. Um, but yeah, I'll have to test it test it out. Okay, um, I'll stop sharing. I, I guess uh, thanks for you know uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this. And yeah, uh, any more questions you can just email me, or I think we're going to go to a breakout room, so you can ask me over there. Yeah.